Bar number two up near Healdsburg was also skimmed in 2002 and 2006. Both times, the bar fully recovered. Skimming the bar also increases flood capacity at this reach and reduces the frequency of flooding in the neighborhoods that are adjacent to the river. Also, habitat for fish was monitored in detail, and riffles and pools were not affected at all by these episodes of skimming at bar 2 or bar 13. So we have a way to manage sediment that's sustainable using gravel extraction. Another tool that will be talked about later is actually using the natural sedimentation of the river to fill old gravel pits and to make habitat. This sequence of the Pasalacqua pit, located in the lower middle reach, shows a pond in 1986 from which over 500,000 yards of material was removed. Since that time, this, this area has filled and become a valuable wetland and riparian forest. This can be done by lowering the banks to the river to allow fine sediment deposition in the gravel pits. In conclusion, the Russian River in the Middle Reach is not a sustainable situation. The straight deep channel is changing by filling and vegetation increases to become the wide shallow channel it once was. This is totally incompatible with land use on the valley floor. Agricultural land will be lost if this is allowed to continue. There are solutions of skimming gravel bars and removing sediment in an environmentally safe manner that will help maintain channel flood capacity and prevent a catastrophe from affecting the important wine industry in Sonoma County. This video describes the Russian River in the Alexander Valley, its history, and land use effects. It also discusses flood protection and erosion control which through time has been accomplished by channelizing the river. The river was originally wide and shallow and took up most of the valley floor, and since that time, land has been reclaimed to agriculture. The river channel is deeper and straighter than natural, but it's starting to fill up with sediment and vegetation and beginning to turn back to its old self, which is a great conflict for landowners. The Alexander Valley, like the Middle Reach, is an enclosed basin. The upstream end, near Cloverdale, comes out of a canyon and emerges into a wide flat area of the valley floor. It's constricted the downstream end near, near Jimtown, where during large floods, a backwater pool forms. This means that more sediment can come into the Alexander Valley than can leave. Thus, the original channel form, which reflected this condition, shows a wide shallow channel with multiple gravel bars and channels and off-channel areas. This diagram shows the results of computer modeling of floods in the river. The top diagram shows a water surface in blue and the ground in black. You can see a break in the water surface slope as it flattens out when it comes to the backwater area. This means that coarse sediment moving along the river cannot go any further and is deposited. And this happens at the large bars near the old DeWitt operation, designated a lower diagram as bars SD, S4 and SD5. This means gravel will accumulate. The valley floor of the Alexander Valley had been converted to agriculture by the late 1800s, as shown in this 1898 postcard looking across the valley to the northeast. The land along the river had been straightened, deepened, and filled, and the river confined to a deep, narrow area in the middle of the valley. This provided some flood protection, but occasionally the river comes out of bank. So over the years, this process of filling the floodplain land and straightening the rivers, called reclamation, has provided flood protection for the landowners in the this map, drawn in 1877, shows the Russian River going from the north area on the upper left to the lower right to the south. You can see the rivers in dense lines and it shows islands. This is significant because it indicates that the river was overloaded with sediment and had braided channels. This is consistent with the sediment supply which is high and with the hydraulics of the valley which have a backwater area the downstream in their Jimtown Bridge. This is a unique situation where gravels will accumulate. Another map drawn in 1898 shows a similar river. You see a wide river with islands, gravel bars, but you can also see all of the agricultural land and roads that have been installed, including the Geyserville Bridge and the Jimtown Bridge. The area in the lower valley was subject to flooding once every five years on average. The upper land depended upon how much capacity had been obtained. In any event, the landowners along the Russian River were always subject to erosion and flooding and stripping of their soils. This diagram shows the 1861 map of the riverbed in blue overlaid on top of a 2005 aerial. You can see the difference in channel width throughout the whole area. You can also see the shifting of the channel across the valley floor. The river has been in one place or another across the valley floor through time. But this diagram shows the conflict between what exists today as a straight narrow channel and what is the natural channel. 
the stable channel given the water and sediment supply from upstream, which has not changed dramatically. This sequence of aerial photographs taken in 1942, 1974, and 1995 near the Jimtown Bridge, which is shown in the lower right corner, shows the dramatic decrease in channel width between these periods. This is due to expanding agricultural land pushing into the river corridor, filling former floodplain and channel areas. All the complex off-channel habitat has been destroyed. But what's important to note is that the straight channel configuration is not natural. The tendency of this river is to be wider, such as shown in 1942. During reclamation, the channel area was reduced by half between that measured in 1861 compared to 2007. The area shown in 1877 was 1,800 acres. By 2007, that had been reduced to 600 acres, one-third of the original amount. Again, the river was across the entire valley floor, so these are very conservative numbers in the early eras. One of the things that played a part in this was gravel mining. This diagram shows the rates of gravel extraction between 1981 and 2000. As you can see, the rates got up to a million yards per year, but averaged around 600,000 tons per year. This dramatically dropped off in the late 90s, early 2000s, allowing the channel to fill by itself naturally, which, once again, is moving things toward a wide and shallow channel, not the deep, narrow one that had been created and sustained by repeated gravel mining. This is what is the, at risk for landowners on the valley floor. These diagrams show the reach of the Russian River in Alexander Valley that is owned by Sire Industries. In 2007, these gravel bars, a lot of them were 14 to 17 feet above low water, whereas before they'd been skimmed one foot above low water. Over time, the channel's beginning to fill, and as these bars fill, the channel moves laterally, increases sinuosity, loses flood capacity, reduces flood protection for landowners, and reduces the ability to move sediment, which causes more deposition. Summary of the data collected between 1994 and 2007 shows the net aggradation or channel filling with sediment of 2.89 million cubic yards. Net bar aggradation is 1.9 million yards. That means that over 4.5 million yards of gravel exists one foot above low water. Note also that a million cubic yards was taken through gravel extraction between 1994 and 97, and that has to be added to the amount. So essentially, 3 million cubic yards has aggraded over the mined areas. Now what are some of the effects of channel filling with sediment? This diagram shows the lower Alexander Valley from Jimtown Bridge upstream and some of the large gravel bars, which have between 1994 and 2007 increased in height anywhere from 2 to 5 feet to up to over 20 feet in some locations indicated in yellow. This has implications for moving sediment and flood water, but also, more dramatically, this could cause channel avulsion, a rapid change to the wide and shallow channel of the original form demonstrate the risk of avulsion in this reach, we've taken the aerial photograph and topography of the channel upstream of Jimtown Bridge for several gravel bars. This area, the bars have come up anywhere between 15 and 20 feet, and vegetation density has increased as well. What's happened is that the flow is being forced in a narrower and narrower part of the channel, which, during a large flood like the 1995 flood, could cause the river to fill with sediment and avulse across the valley floor, and this will be shown in the following diagram. To demonstrate the risk of rapid channel change or channel avulsion from the deep narrow channel to the wide shallow original channel, we're looking at a diagram of 1877 of the Lower Alexander Valley Reach near the Jimtown Bridge. You can see the bridge, the west side road. You can also see the river channel with the tight lines and islands, once again inferring that there's more sediment than the river can move. The next sequence of diagrams shows how channel change could occur and the risk of avulsion resulting from sediment filling the channel.